Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and, and thank you all for coming today. Um, we want to kick off 2010 by introducing a truly magical and revolutionary product today. But before we get to that, I just got a few updates. Uh, the first is an update about iPods. Uh, a few weeks ago, we sold our 250 millionth iPod. And iPods have changed the way we discover and purchase and enjoy music. And with 250 million of them, I just didn't want to let this moment pass without just recognizing it. It's pretty amazing. And uh, so that's our first update. Second update is about our retail stores. You know, we now have 284 retail stores. It's amazing. And last quarter, the holiday quarter, we had over 50 million visitors to our stores. 50 million people in one quarter. One of our newest stores is our fourth store in New York City. It's on Broadway, a few blocks up from Lincoln Center. And it's really beautiful. This is a shot of it before it opened. It'll never look this good again. Uh, <laughs> and uh, here it is on opening day. The shot across the street. It is so wonderful to be putting these stores with their phenomenal buying experience right in the neighborhoods of our customers. It feels great. And uh, so this is one of our, our latest and greatest retail stores. Next update, store of another kind, the App Store. An incredible phenomenon, delivering applications to iPhone users and iPod Touch users around the world. We have over 140,000 applications now on the App Store. And a few weeks ago, we announced a user downloaded the three billionth application from the App Store. This is in around 18 months since inception. Three billion applications in the App Store. And lastly, we started Apple. We started Apple in 1976. 34 years later, we just ended our holiday quarter, our first fiscal quarter of 2010, with $15.6 billion of revenue. I don't even believe that. <laughs> now, what that means is that Apple is an over $50 billion company. Now, I like to forget that, because that's not how we think about Apple. But it is pretty amazing. Now, where does Apple get this revenue? It gets it from three product lines, iPods, iPhones, and of course, Macs. Now, what's really interesting about this is that iPods are mobile devices. iPhones are all mobile devices. And most of the Macs that we ship now are laptops. They're mobile devices, too. Apple is a mobile devices company. That's what we do. And we asked ourselves, with $15.6 billion of revenues last quarter, how does Apple stack up against all the other companies that sell mobile devices? And it turns out that by revenue, Apple is the largest mobile devices company in the world now. It's amazing. Apple is larger than Sony's mobile devices business, selling great camcorders and digital cameras and stuff that they make. It's bigger than Samsung's mobile devices business with all their handsets that they sell. And by revenue, it's even bigger than Nokia's mobile devices business with all of the handsets that they sell. 
Apple is the number one mobile devices company in the world. So those are the updates that we have today. So now let's get to the main event. I chuckled when I saw this. <laughs> hmm. But before we get to that, I want to go back to 1991, when Apple, Apple announced and shipped its first power books. This was the first modern laptop computer. Apple actually invented the modern laptop computer with these power books. It was the first laptop that had a TFT screen, the first modern LCD screens. It was the first laptop that pushed the keyboard up, creating palm rests, and had an integrated pointing device, in this case, a trackball. Well, of course, almost 20 years later, we've got incredible laptops now. Just a few years ago, in 2007, Apple reinvented the phone with the iPhone. And a few years later, we've got the great iPhone 3GS, the best phone in the world. And so all of us use laptops and smartphones now. Everybody uses a laptop and or a smartphone. And the question has arisen lately, is there room for a third category of device in the middle? Something that's between a laptop and a smartphone. And of course, we've pondered this question for years as well. The bar is pretty high. In order to really create a new category of devices, those devices are going to have to be far better at doing some key tasks. They're going to have to be far better at doing some really important things, better than the laptop, better than the smartphone. What kind of tasks? Well, things like browsing the web. That's a pretty tall order. Something that's better at browsing the web than a laptop? OK. Doing email. Enjoying and sharing photographs. Video, watching videos. Enjoying your music collection. Playing games. Reading e-books. If there's going to be a third category of device, it's going to have to be better at these kinds of tasks than a laptop or a smartphone. Otherwise, it has no reason for being. Now, some people have thought that that's a netbook. The problem is, netbooks aren't better at anything. <laughs> they, they're slow, they have low quality displays, and they run clunky old PC software. So they're not better than a laptop at anything, they're just cheaper. They're just cheap laptops. And we don't think that they're a third category device. But we think we've got something that is. And we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. So let me show it to you now. This is what it looks like. I happen to have one right here. That's what it looks like. Very thin. It's just like this. So, just give you a little overview. It's very thin. And you can uh, change the background screen, the home screen, to personalize it any way you want. People put their own photos on it, I'm sure. But we ship a few, and you can make it anything you want. And what this device does is extraordinary. You can browse the web with it. It is the best browsing experience you've ever had. It's phenomenal to see a whole web page right in front of you and you can manipulate with your fingers. It's unbelievably great, way better than a laptop. 